Hey hey, in anime here, and we have finally reached the conclusion of Wonder Egg Priority. And huh? Oh, I take that back. It has actually been confirmed that there is going to be a Wonder Egg Priority special released at the end of June. That is a relief because I did not find out this information until after watching episode 12, and I was like, how can it end like this? I have so many questions. But I'm going to try and answer those questions and pose a couple ideas that I have for this much anticipated conclusion. So if you're ready. Pull up a chair, and let's discuss. Episode 12 really encapsulates everything that I love about this series. It was full of metaphor, symbolism, and most of all, ambiguity. The episode begins with an argument between Momoe and Rika. Rika is furious that Momo never mentioned anything about what happened when you conclude the game, and pretty much puts her at fault for the death of Manon. Momo counters that, if she did say anything, what could any of them reasonably do? So here we see what the Akas had mentioned a couple of episodes ago. Momo has built up a wall and doesn't want anything to do with the eggs or her friends, while Rika is on a path of destruction. She wants revenge and later is desperately trying to re-enter the dream world. Despite all of this, Ai returns to her game and we really get to see how sinister Akka really is towards these girls. Ai totally refuses to bring out Leon because she doesn't want him to die. And you think Akka sympathizes when he says you imprinted on them as their mother. But then he shows that he doesn't care at all. The only objective is to complete the mission and he forcefully summons Leon out. Now let's keep focus on the Akkas for a minute. Later in the episode they are viewing Rika trying to get back to the Wonder World and Ura Akka believes that would be a bad idea because in her state of mind she would be easy picking for Fro. Well, Akka says you really don't know until you try. Again, not caring about the well-being of the girls, but more focus on his objective, which gets brought up by the era Akka. The whole motive of this game isn't really to study girls' suicides, but rather to save Himari. This creates an interesting dynamic between the Akkas. Ura Akka is the one who shows some concern for the girls and is pointing out these things about Akka to Akka himself. And I believe Akka is so relentless in getting Himari back that I wouldn't be surprised if there's a confrontation between the two of them in the last episode, and Akka destroying or killing Ura Akka, and then Akka meeting his own demise either by Frill or the girls. Because at this point, I'm going to consider Akka as the villain of this series because I believe Frill will have some kind of redemption or healing or a purification, while Akka is pretty much a scumbag and there shouldn't be hope for him. Uh, and refocusing on I now. She cracks her egg, and lo and behold, it's her. This is where we get a lot of confusion and metaphor and symbolism, so try and bear with me here. We learn that this eye is from a parallel universe. This isn't too outlandish a concept because parallel universes were mentioned by Kotobuki to be real places that exist. So the rest of the episode is pretty much a metaphor for Ai confronting herself about all the issues that she has been dealing with. And then enter Mr. Wonder Sawaki himself. I liked how clever it was, how they used his, you know, his big head and the paint as his wonder form and saying art is an explosion really gave me some Naruto vibes. But anyway, I admit when I saw him, I was like, I knew it that, you know, he was going to be the wonder killer. But let's take a step back here. For one, he definitely is a creep. No matter how you spin it, he should not have been having that one on one time with his students where he's painting them and then takes it a step further by painting a mature version of his girlfriend's daughter. However, the battle between him and I shows us that in our eyes world, she created a monster by having doubts and suspicions. I has always had to deal with bullying and self-confidence issues. So there was the culmination of one, jealousy for Sawaki stealing the attention of her mom away, two, not being able to help Koito in her time of need when it came to recording her bullies, and three, not understanding what kind of relationship Koito had with Mr. Sawaki. All of this resulted in her projecting it against him and making her, and us, perceive him as a bad guy. But that's our eye. Parallel eye did deal with the Mr. Sawaki that was a monster. He didn't care for his students and pretty much convinced her to kill herself. Because according to him, young girls have a pure love, but when they get older it's corrupted. So he suggested you might as well just kill yourself now before that happened. So if you didn't understand the scenes with Koito, basically, Wonder Sawaki uses power to separate the two eyes. Parallel Eye was kept in the real world slash dream world, 
while our eye was put in another kind of dream world so that he could influence her to kill herself. This is done pretty slyly because I mentioned episodes ago that if Koito had ever asked her to commit suicide with her, she most likely would have done it. So to have Koito here in this quote unquote dream was clever on the Wonder Killer's part because it also shows how strong Ai has become. She was able to resist the temptation of death. She was able to show her growth, her strength, and the resilience was that she would regret killing herself because she would miss her mom and hate not being able to be there to support her. And then she pulls a cool bar and slices through the dimension and joins Parallel Eye again. And after Eye's victory, the countdown begins and Koito appears. It's a short but sweet reunion, and then of course we meet our third flower-headed bringer of despair. Yeah, it's a long random sounding name that she has, but I think it goes with the theme of technology with the other two. Hyphen and Dot are used in programming, and I think the name of this girl may have just been the result of a glitch that Frillo is experiencing when naming her, but that's kind of irrelevant. What I really want to get into is the scene of the attack. It seems confusing at first, but here's how I broke it down. The clips aren't in order. Rodriguez throws her boomerang at our eye, and she blocks it before being thrown into the wall. She is knocked unconscious, and Rodriguez mentions she wants something shiny. Parallel Eye hears this and understands, and because she has witnessed how heroic and strong our eye has been this entire episode, she finally finds some courage and decides to offer up her eyeball, which Rodriguez assures her she's not going to kill her. She throws a boomerang, acquires the eyeball, and Parallel Eye is on the ground bleeding, and then she fades away. This fits with what the other Flowerhead girls were doing. They never wanted to kill any of our main girls, but they still needed an offering. With the knowledge I had, she was able to keep Leon safe, thus there had to be some kind of other offer given. Our eye wakes up because now she has the PTSD that the other girls experience, but I think her result will be much different than theirs. And there we have it. I thought it was a great episode visually, along with showing the progression of Ai's character, but yet again there are still questions. I'm very suspect of Nero now. She was with the Akas when they were discussing Rika and talking very openly in front of her about Frill and Hamari. She also hasn't encountered a flower-headed girl yet, and we haven't seen her complete her game. There were only three of those girls, and I feel like it would be cheap if the writers had her encounter one of them instead of a new one, which means I don't think she'll encounter one at all. Also, I'm starting to think about how strongly Akka wants Hamari back. He has the power to snatch her from the parallel universe, so why hasn't he yet? I feel like this is where the girls come in, where he knows that he needs something from their ultimate encounter with Thanatos in order to truly restore Hamari. But please tell me what you think. We have a while for the conclusion's release, and I'm going to keep making videos on different uh, subjects in the series because I definitely didn't go into depth like I would have wanted to, but I want to know your thoughts and predictions on what's going to happen next. So go ahead and leave those thoughts in the comments below and poke that subscribe button. I'm an anime, and I'm out anime.